Chapter 12 Pancho and Lefty Willie Nelson and Merle Haggard Originally released on the album Pancho and Lefty Epic 1983 Written by Towns Van Zandt A big part of songwriting, like all writing, is editing distilling thought down to essentials. Novice writers often hide behind filigree. In many cases the artistry is in what is unsaid. As the old saying goes, an iceberg moves gracefully because most of it is beneath the surface. That said, it is prescient that John Towns Van Zandt dropped his most prosaic given name early in life, whittling his identity down to an unforgettable run of syllables. Born a square peg in the round hole of a wealthy family, Towns tried to fit in and become a lawyer like his dad. A love of Elvis Presley and various intoxicants derailed those plans. Lifelong battles with depression and addiction turned him inward and squeezed out dark, hard scrabble songs from the depths of his sadness. Diagnosed with manic depression, Towns were shocked with both electricity and massive dosages of insulin. The treatments destroyed portions of his memories, which most likely is what gives his songs such a skeletal, detached feel. School and the military had no place for a shocked and broken poetic soul, and dreams of Elvis Presley were replaced by a love for the sadder songs of Hank Williams. He drifted and he drank. Texas was full of musicians to watch and learn from. Guy Clark, Gatemouth Brown, Jerry Jeff Walker, Butch Hancock, Doc Watson, Lightning Hopkins, Mickey Newbury and Willie Nelson. Newbury brought him to Nashville, where he introduced him to cowboy Jack Clement, a man who knew extreme behaviour, having already produced Jerry Lee Lewis. This began a prolific, tumultuous and ultimately disastrous chapter in Towns' life, culminating in lawsuits, accusations and erased master tapes. One way to measure a songwriter is to look at the singers who sing their songs. Towns has had some of the best. Neil Young, John Prine, Nora Jones, Gillian Welch, Robert Plant, Garth Brooks, Emily Harris and hundreds of others. Another way to measure a songwriter is, are the songs still being sung? Townses are, every night, in small clubs, in lonely bedrooms, and wherever the broken hearted watch the shadows grow long. The worst thing about a song like Pancho and Lefty is that it put enough money in Townses' pocket for him to poison himself. He died on New Year's Day, just as his idol Hank Williams had 44 years earlier. Pancho and Lefty is an epic panoramic tale, beautifully sung and beautifully produced, featuring two of the most iconic singers in the modern era. Willie Nelson could, as they say, sing the phone book and make you weep. He could also write the phone book, and Merle is pretty much the same. Willie, in his pre-performing days, happened to be a door-to-door -door Bible salesman, and if his soulful vocal delivery is any indication of his personal magnetism and upfront honesty, then he must be responsible for half the Bibles in America. A bandito tale with two central figures, one a swashbuckling, pistol-slapping, big sombreroed revolutionary Pancho, and the other a laid-back, honey-voiced, honky-tonk hero, Lefty. They're on the road to nowhere in the deserts of old Mexico. Pancho's got a horse as fast as a NASCAR racer, and Lefty can't sing the blues because he's been screwed up in the mouth by something either Pancho or the Federales did. Can't even talk, let alone sing. He drops out of sight and ends up on the low side of Cleveland in a fleabag hotel on a lost weekend trip with 30 pieces of silver and a pistol to blow out his brains. Pancho is a mama's boy, totally undisciplined and self-centered. He's always been encouraged to speak about things he's ignorant of. Pancho and Lefty are a match made in heaven, but neither of them have found their true mate in life. 
the underclass, the honest world, the downtrodden peasants, a scared shitless of the ruthless Pancho. He squeezes them for all they're worth and makes them suffer. Lefty is some kind of backstabber. Both these guys are nonconformist thieves. The aristocratic establishment, the upper class landowners, are too strong for them, and the lower classes have nothing much worth stealing. So they attack the middle class, taking advantage of and exploiting their false values, materialism, hypocrisy and insecurities. Pancho is also supplying the alcohol, drugs and sex for them. Pancho's the man. Eventually he violates some kind of agreement with the Federals and his end is automatic. In another life Pancho would have been in the bullring and Lefty on the Ryman country music stage. Pancho and Lefty, two reflections of each other. Neither of these guys thought about how to make a successful exit. <laughs>